Have you thought about adding a new animal to your acreage? Why not give llamas a try? Today we're here with Phyllis Childers. And uh, Phyllis, tell us about the llama we have right here. Well, this is Paris, and she will be two years old this October. She was raised on our farm. She's giving you a kiss there. That's a llama kiss. Do you think she'd give me one? She might. Oh, thank you, Paris. <laughs> I must smell. <laughs> Tell me a little about if I wanted to get a llama, what are the basic things that I need on my acreage? Well, you need a three-sided shed to protect them from the elements. And uh, an acre of pasture would probably be sufficient. A four-foot fence is adequate. And how about caring for the llamas themselves as far as their feed? Uh, we do not grain ours because we buy good uh, grass outside alpha hay for the winter time and then we have plenty of pasture for the summertime and that's adequate. Uh, we give them a sheet mineral and we give them salt blocks. And how about for uh, veterinary care? Um, we do most of our own work. We trim their toenails two to three times a year and we give them uh, the worm medicine Ivermec or Panicure two to three to four times a year depending on whether they need it or not. We okay. often have them checked to see that they do. And, and tell me a little about their wool. I see there's kind of an unusual pattern you have there on your llamas. Uh, we sh have a sheep shear come and uh, shear the llamas in May. Okay. And this is what they call a barrel cut. A barrel cut. And what? we have them stay about an inch away from their skin so they don't sunburn. Okay. And they will sunburn? If, you get if to they're them? sheared clear to the skin and out in the right. sun, they can sunburn. But you have to shear them. Is that for the heat? It's for it's the heat. And we it opens up around their legs because that's where they lose their heat is in their armpit, what I call area. And why don't you want to uh, trim them all the way? Well, there's really no advantage because they don't lose that much heat through their neck, and normally their neck wool is real pretty, and it's kind of a status thing for all them, right. too. And what do you use the wool for? Um, it, first of all, it's sent normally to somebody that processes the wool, and okay. they wash it and cart it and make it into yarn. And people make sweaters out of it. If it's a coarser hair, they can make rugs out of it, Christmas ornaments, scarves. And it's different than sheep wool, or is it similar? Um, no, it is different because there's no oil in it. Okay. Where do these animals come from? Uh, originally, they came from South America. And what are they used for today? Uh, for pets, for breeding, for resell. Um, a lot of people show them. They travel across the United okay, States so to shows. Okay, llama shows. I've heard that uh, some livestock producers keep llamas uh, as guard animals as well. That's true. We've sold a lot of, particularly males, and then they gild them to guard sheep, and they're wonderful sheep guards. All right. Yeah. And is, is this llama about the average size that a llama would be? I would, would say be, she Cobra? is. All right. Uh, she, and the males get larger then? Uh, sometimes they're a little larger, a little heavier maybe. All right. About how much does a llama cost? Well, it depends on where in the United States you are and whether it's a show animal that's okay. been shown across the so United States So the show States animals would not. cost more right. if I just wanted one for a pet? Probably um, you could find a male for 200 and a female starting at 400 Well, that's very reasonable. It is very reasonable. And how old would those animals be when you bought them? Uh, normally we wean four to six months, so any time after they're weaned they can go to a new home. All right. And how often do llamas have babies? Uh, once a year. Their gestation period's uh, just short two weeks of one year. Okay, and do they usually just have one baby? Yes. And what sound do they make? I hear this little, you know, almost a humming noise. Is that the only sound they make? That's basically, they have two sounds. The hum, which can mean they're talking to you or they're happy or maybe they're talking to their baby. And then they have a shrill call, kind of like a donkey bray that is an alarm call. Well, they sound like very interesting pets. They are, and they're beautiful. Thank you, Phyllis. Now stay tuned for more from Living the Country Life. Looking for the latest gadgets and gear? Check out these cool country tools. Keep on cutting with the Sharper Blade line of self-sharpening blades. Choose the Wheat Whacker Blade. No more fixing broken lines, reloading empty spool heads, or buying replacements. Or try Edger Blade. It won't damage the concrete, brick, or stone edging of your lawn. Or choose the durable mower blade that fits riding in push mowers and sharpens itself as you mow. 
Looking for a lighter way to spray? Get rid of insects without breaking your back using the Mini Light ULV Mister. This light, inexpensive ULV applicator can be used with multi-purpose insecticides indoors and out. The Mini Light can be quickly mounted on a small utility vehicle, golf cart, or ATV, and is small enough to store inside a trunk. Save hours of mowing time with the Swisher Postmaster. Postmaster actually trims around fence posts with its patent-pending breakaway trimmer head that enables it to pivot around the posts. Designed to pull behind an ATV, lawn tractor, or other utility vehicle, the unit provides maximum coverage with a 360-degree guard cutting shield. To get your cool country tools, log on to livingthecountrylife.com.